the invitation to reconsider the role of women in the life of church and world. We might even say to reinvestigate, to look at it once more through a fresh lens. I'm Kevin DeBeer, Minister of Word and Sacrament of Bells Hill Central Parish Church, and this is chapter 23 of 30 chapters in the year 2019 and beyond, exploring the gift, the challenge, and the invitation of biblical hope. Last week, we read portions of Matthew 28, and we'll go over some of that again, but read a few extra verses from verse 5 to 10. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the woman hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. It's an amazing, amazing account. One resurrection account. It is an indicator that indeed women play a vital role in the life, not only of the early church, but throughout the history of the church. And even though at times their voice and intuition has been suppressed, we in the 21st century are privileged to recognize that indeed the female voice is rising once again to the place where it can be heard and appreciated and responded to. Three simple thoughts. Women offer us a very real experience of compassion. They prepare to go to anoint Jesus' body when so many of the disciples are cowering in fear. They are compassionate. Secondly, they are courageous. Can you just for a moment consider the courage that would be required to go toward the tomb at a time when indeed your very life would be threatened to have been associated with Jesus. And they offer us a challenge. They try and interpret what they have seen, what they have witnessed, what they have experienced. They try and condense it into words that prove meaningful and build bridges for the earliest Christian communities. And it is there in that exchange that indeed the fledgling church finds its voice. Christ is risen. There are many and varied ways in which Jesus then appears amongst those earliest communities and instills within them a sense of faith and spirit, of hope and renewal, of life and of daring. And so we appreciate the role of women in the life of church and world and pray that we might be open to intuition and hope. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, in so many ways, we are tempted to hide behind the cool facts of logic. And yet you too want to crack open our hearts and stir us to a new way of being and living in the world, to renew within us courage and compassion, to invite us to respond to the challenge of the gospel, to hear, experience, see, the possibilities of resurrection. And so, Lord Jesus Christ, stir us not only in our minds, but in our hearts and our very being. Let us rise and go from the tomb, saying, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen.